Hi there. I am a Kunihiko Yoshimura from Fujitsu System Integration Laboratories. I'm happy to be speaking at this conference. Today, I will be giving a talk titled How to Apply Machine Learning Appropriate Way for Security Operation. Uh, this page is about me. Uh, I have been working in the security field for 10 years. I have been doing security operations for four years and security research for six years. So I have a good understanding of both the operations and the research cultures. As a result of my research, I gave a talk at the first 13th annual conference three years ago. I'll talk about it later. Based on my experience in, uh, in uh, security uh, operation uh, and the knowledge from research institute, I would like to introduce a recommended method that also can be easily used in your field. Okay, number one is an uh, introduction. In the security operation field, Security Operations Center SOC has the missions for defending organization. One of them is to monitor alerts and events and to alert the incident for IR team or customers. Another one is manage security appliances like firewalls. SAC is the front line in the security defense and like a star player in managed security services. SAC also has implement ta uh, important task to com uh, complete these missions. Uh, one of them is to maintain signature rules of sensors or themes. Purposes are to ignore false positive, remove all the vulnerability rules that didn't uh, exist in the field, and add signature rules that are appropriate for operations. SOC team is always busy uh, with monitoring and managing. However, they should spend more time for maintain, maintaining uh, the rules. Otherwise, an analyst cannot respond alerts effectively. As a result, he will not be able to keep up with it. This diagram is a structure of system in my presentation at three years ago. I developed sample similarity scoring system, S4, uh, which determine most similar known malware pieces for new malware. Uh, this tool divides the 17 similarity tools into three categories, surface, dynamic, and geometric. Uh, integrate the uh, uh, similarity score using score transformation in each category and output uh, result in a ranking format. I talked about the effectiveness of multidimensional evaluation by integrating Maria similarity tools to scores. S4 succeeded clustering pieces of malware as malware families effectively and support malware analysts by reducing analysis time. The S4 is a useful tool, but had the different, uh, difficult, uh, difficult to tune problem. Uh, it is necessary to spend a time for maintain tuning parameter uh, that used in the score transformation. When I integrated 17 uh, tools scores for three dimensions, I set parameter uh, of piecewise linear transformation, PLT, for all of tools. 
Uh, PLT is flexible for a human thinking, but it is complex. Uh, it needs much time for setting the appropriate parameter. In short, this tool gave an analyst uh, time reduction, but also time increase. Uh, that is a fatal problem. In this chapter, I'll talk my approach uh, that uh, I try to apply machine learning for maintaining automatic tuning parameters. In each step, I will talk about the basic stance for applying machine learning and the examples I experienced in S4 case. First step, also most important step, we should pick a set of goods for machine learning. In other words, it is a planning for machine learning. At first, we decide type of machine learning. In general, there are three types that we know well, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforced learning. Uh, there are three important points. Uh, first, uh, it's to define a cost function for machine learning. Uh, of course, uh, the status that cannot be judged by human being, it's neither by a machine. Secondary, what is the data you can prepare in the learning? You must prepare the data you refer in the operation and uh, to discriminate the types of uh, the data. Uh, that is explained next slide. Okay, thirdly, is of explain, explanation. Uh, recently, advanced algorithms uh, like deep learning is coming uh, in the world. However, in the security operation, I don't recommend that techniques is too advanced to control by a human because uh, it often occurs critical responsibility in our operation. So you should choose simpler algorithms like regression analysis. There are two main categories of data. Uh, quantitative is a data that changes in a graduate, uh, such as days uh, or event counts. Uh, qualitative is digital, such as on and off, uh, or one and zero. Uh, it is important to be aware of which category the data to be trained will be. In the S4 case, scores from several tools can be prepared to create an integrated score. Uh, these are qu quantitative data, yes. However, without PLT, we should not prepare integrated scores for learning uh, in advance. We need to change our thinking. Uh, what could I use to prepare the data for learning? <clears throat> the answer is add the two pieces of malware that scores that same family or different. Uh, this is qualitative data because uh, there are two, uh, only two parts, same and different. In the supervised learning, uh, we choose uh, predicting in a single variable from multiple variables uh, in called multivariable analysis. Select the appropriate algorithm by applying it to the type of the data we have just organized.
Yes,、uh, this is a case of ether. I chose to use logistic regression. I identify the tools、uh, that score high only、uh, for the same family and then、uh, find the coefficient that、uh, minimize the distance between them and the logistic function. I mean, I changed score transformation logic、uh, from PLT to logistic function. The logistic regression feature is that the data that was qualitative at training、uh, will be between one and zero、uh, in the prediction phase.、Uh, that is、uh, quantitative data.、Uh, this algorithm is highly recommended because of its versatility. Uh, this is because、uh, in the field of、uh, security operation,、uh, situations sometimes occur such as、uh, the past data is clearly malicious and benign.、Uh, however, in the prediction stage, we want to、uh, predict the priority metric for responding first. Okay, step three,、uh, let's call it.、Uh, I chose to use Python、uh, because of、uh, its versatility,、uh, but、uh, I think you can use any language that suits your environment. The code in Python is very simple to put together, just do a fit and predict. Two lines of coding, and you are done. Congratulations. However,、uh, merely implementing machine learning is not the goal. Rather, this is just a starting point. I will explain the actual hurdles、uh, I encountered when applying it and how I jumped over them. Okay, chapter three is trial and errors,、uh, these hurdles. Hurdle number one is a low winning rate.、Uh, first, I used data from a test、uh, I did three years ago to see if I could successfully group them.、Uh, as a result,、uh, one malaria family did, did not recognize many samples correctly.、Uh, we will look at the output data uh, to uh, find the codes. Uh, the, the red text on the screen shows that、uh, the coefficient of one source is a negative number.、Uh, this means uh, that uh, the higher the score, the more different the family. We examine the correlation value between the target variable and the explanatory variables、uh, of the tool. Uh, correlation value is an indicator of how much these two variables are related. And the、uh, correlation value is 0.49,、uh, a positive number,、uh, which means that、uh, as one increases, the, the other also tends to increase. Why is this? When we look at other explanatory variables, we found that、uh, there was a very strong correlation with another explanatory variable.、Uh, this problem is called multicollinearity, and it is one of the problems、uh, that must be avoided in various machine learning. Uh, there are several countermeasures.、Uh, a simple solution is to disable one of the correct data,、uh, correlated data,、uh, but in this case,、uh, it could be extreme data. So we try to solve this、uh, problem by dimensional compression. In PCA,、uh, principal component analysis,、uh, 
uh, a theory of efficient dimensional remake. Uh, there is a metric called the explanation ratio. When you try to uh, represent uh, three, uh, the three tools in three dimensions and put those dimen uh, dimensions together effici uh, effi efficiently in PCA, uh, we are able to represent 97% uh, of the original data uh, in the two dimensional state. Uh, we thought that if we could truncate the remaining percentage and perform regression analysis to restore the original dimensions, we would be able to obtain results uh, that were not affected by multiple linearity. Okay, hurdle number two. In further testing, uh, I increased the number of families to be trained to 10. Uh, this seems uh, to work fine, uh, but when I run the calculation with uh, these parameters, I only got 42 points even if I got a perfect score with all the tools. Uh, assuming that uh, there are two samples in each uh, of the 10 families. Uh, the number of combinations with different family is 4,500, and the same families is uh, 450. Uh, if the data you want to train is extremely skewed, the result uh, will have to uh, be skewed uh, to that side. This is called imbalanced data. Uh, the solution is simple. Uh, adjust the amount of correct data. Increasing the amount of correct data is all, uh, called oversampling and decreasing the amount of in Incorrect data is called uh, undersampling. Python already has a variety of logic modules like Scikit-Learn available uh, for this purpose. Uh, you can choose the appropriate logic uh, based on the nature of your data and sometimes by benchmarking uh, each of them. Next hurdle, on the left side of the screen is the ranking result uh, of the one of the three trick bot samples. Uh, normally, we would like to see trick bot at the top of the list, uh, but uh, there are many different types of malware in the mix. In case like this, uh, we uh, examine the uh, scores of each tool on the sample. Uh, visual, visualization is useful for examining the characteristic of data. We, if we examine the distribution of scores output by one of the tools on the right side of the screen, uh, we can see that uh, scores uh, for different combinations have a single mountain, certain at uh, 40%. And the scores for the same combination have two mountains, uh, one certain at uh, 80% and uh, the other at 20%. Uh, if we focus on this 80% mountain, we can do machine learning that clearly captures uh, the futures. But uh, machine learning evaluates both mountain equally and judges them uh, as featureless. Uh, this problem is not a general, uh, have a general name. Uh, I called this problem data overlap. As a countermeasure, pro-processing is performed. Uh, define something like what data should be ignored. 
And in this case,、uh, ignore the same combination of data that is less than、uh, the average、uh, of different c o m b i n a t i o n of data.、Uh, this way, each of them、uh, will become one mountain, and the two will identify them as a feature group. Now we'll verify that,、uh, that the machine learning system we've worked so hard to create w o r k properly. First step is to select target malware families and retrieve sample randomly.、Uh, we identified the malware families、uh, that were popular at the, at, at the time from the monthly reports prepared by、uh, the Center for Internet Security. Uh, security uh, uh, CIS.、Uh, obtained malware hash value from the information provided by the CTI vendor、uh, and downloaded the samples from virus total. Next,、uh, compare samples between different months,、uh, arrange them,、uh, arrange them in chronological order. Now,、uh, from the past malware and predict from the future malware. Finally, evaluation outputs verify、uh, that clustering is working、uh, by the correct rate and the node, node graph. To determine the target malware families, I referred to the monthly reports published by CDIS. I chose malware families uh, that uh, had up, up, appeared in the rankings at least five times、uh, in the seven months report、uh, at that time.、Uh, we randomly selected from a hash list based on the CTI of seven selected malware families and downloaded. Uh, the samples uh, pre uh, present in virus total. This page shows the correct rate from each malware,、uh, which is a quantitative evaluation result. For reference,、uh, the correct rate of a commercial malware similarity service is also shown. Uh, this service、uh, has not only the sim、uh, similarity between samples. But also the master data of malware families and、uh, benign software like Microsoft binaries. So the、uh, value of the service cannot be measured by just this. The S4 total correct rate is 76%, uh, which means that at,、uh, the Accuracy of S4 similarity is uh, compatible uh, to that of commercial services. Uh, this is a qu、uh, qualitative evaluation with a node graph showing a relationship of 19, pa 19 points or more. S4 co、uh, connected samples of the same family successfully. In the most of cases. Overall,、uh, we can say that the S4 tuning automation was a success. Okay,、uh, chapter five, conclusion. S4,、uh, which I have just introduced, has a POC ready、uh, to be provided. Uh, we are discussing the possibility of making it open source carefully、uh, because of the risk uh, of uh, it falling into the hands of malware developers. If you are interested in S4, I can make it available to you、uh, via GitHub uh, after signing on DNA.、Uh, please contact. It. Okay, conclusion.、Uh, my takeaway message is the procedures in this talk、uh, should, should help you improve your security operation with machine learning. 
in the SOC operation, analysts need to spend a long time for tasks like maintaining signature rules. Otherwise, you must respond to may, uh, alerts, including many unnecessary ones. I solved S4 issues in the same way as mentioned above uh, with machine learning. Okay, thank you for listening.